Hey, Florida, we are pulling for you. We are thinking about you. You got this big storm coming and parts of Florida already feeling it. Yikes, it's tough. It's time for America to pull together, right, Joe? Right? Isn't that what you promised? Sure it is. Remember? We can see each other, not as adversaries, but as neighbors. We can treat each other with dignity and respect. We can join forces, stop the shouting, and lower the temperature. Oh, such a nice idea that you had no intention on following through on. As Florida gets ready for this major, major hurricane, uh, it seems like Joe Biden has forgotten that Florida is part of the United States. Ron DeSantis is doing everything a governor should be doing. At this point, it's kind of customary for the president of the United States to check in with the governors. He's not doing that. He's checking in with mayors, happen to be Democrats for the most part, but not Ron DeSantis. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. The FEMA, the, t the head of FEMA, this person, one of their top officials says, yeah, no, um, we're good. We don't need to talk to Ron. He's made conversations with the mayors. So is there any reason why not the governor? Again, we have a strong team that's in place supporting the governor right now, working side by side with him and his staff. We'll continue to stay engaged with him. Yeah, All right. So the answer is they are brutal political enemies. But you put this stuff down around the hurricane. Hey, I'll give this to Obama and Chris Christie. <laughs> These guys came together in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy, although... Chris went a little bit overboard. He got carried away by his own ambition. More on that in just a little bit. But first, this horrible phenomenon, totally unnecessary, continues. Cops are under fire. We haven't seen this kind of violence directed at police, directed at po the population in general, in about 50 years. And part of it, so many lies have been told about the police day in and day out. And it has an effect. All this stuff in the air all the time, it changes the way people view the cops. There is a connection between the fact that law enforcement originated as slave patrols and are still in 2021 killing black men and women on the street. Policing began in this country with slave patrols. The idea that certain people are, are dangerous, inherently threatening. Many slave patrols evolved into police departments. You cannot disconnect modern American policing from slave patrols, from racial caste systems, and from systems of white supremacy. Well, yes, you can, because they have absolutely nothing to do with each other. The police systems here were modeled on Scotland Yard. The first organized police department started in New York and Boston in the 1800s, cities where there was no slavery at the time. These are lies. Also, liberals are always surprised about what cops actually look like. They have a, they have a notion in their head. This police department is too toxic. Uh, it is too white. The other is this other longstanding issue of, um, you know, largely white police forces and African-American citizens who've done nothing wrong. There will undoubtedly be violence tonight. You have a largely white police force that is going to face off again for another night against a largely black community. What did Rush Limbaugh call them? The drive-by media. They come by, they know nothing, they offer their lame analysis, and then they leave, and they're wrong. They're always wrong, especially about law enforcement. They just don't get it. They don't know cops, they aren't cops, and they can't understand anybody who would join the police department, and I've seen this before. They're often surprised at how diverse these big city police departments are. In New York City, every time we've lost a pair of cops, it happens to be often uh, officers of color. They don't get that. Liberals, they just have this uh, stereotypical view of what cops are supposed to look like. And you know who holds that stereotype? Barack Obama. Oh boy, this guy, what a snob. We all knew it, we all saw it. For a while we thought, gosh, he could really bring the country together. No, he decided to just stir things up. Right after he was done charming us and saying things that probably needed to be said, but he was only saying it for his own benefit. Go into any inner city neighborhood and folks will tell you 
that government alone can't teach our kids to learn. They know that parents have to teach, that children can't achieve unless we raise their expectations and turn off the television sets and eradicate the slander that says a black youth with a book is acting white. They know those things. Wow. Less than 20 years ago, it was a slander. A black youth with a book is acting white. I know I have never thought that or felt that. Apparently, that's a slander within the black community. Has there been a discussion about that? Has there been a change? I don't think so. I know so, actually, that there hasn't been, because he barely touched on it when he was president. He said those things to win people over. Oh, boy, he would say things and go there because only he could. No, all he did was stir things up for his own political benefit. Black Lives Matter. My goodness gracious, he was planting the seeds all along for this carnage. You know, one of the worst examples, really, of his presidency was in 2016, when Dallas police officers came under attack. Do you remember this? Five Dallas police officers were assassinated. Five of them. And they were killed by this individual, Micah Johnson. Uh, he targeted law enforcement. He was angered over the Alton Sterling shooting. Alton Sterling, do you remember him? Uh, yeah, has a nice smile. And some people just remember that. But if you look a little bit deeper, he was shot by cops because he was waving a gun around trying to force people to buy his CDs. He had a long criminal record. We'll put it up on the screen for you. He was a registered sex offender. That... Yeah, it's kind of glossed over in history and also in the immediate aftermath of what happened to those cops in Dallas. So Barack Obama goes to the funeral, which is appropriate. Five police officers are killed. And he decides to eulogize not somebody who was killed in Dallas, but he talks about Alton Sterling. Listen to this. But even those who dislike the phrase Black Lives Matter, Surely we should be able to hear the pain of Alton Sterling's family. We should, when, when we hear a friend describe him by saying that whatever he cooked, he cooked enough for everybody, that, that should sound familiar to us, that maybe he wasn't so different than us, so that we can, yes, insist that his life matters. You can talk about that at Alton Sterling's funeral. Alton Sterling, again, essentially a career criminal and a sex offender who threatened people with a gun if they didn't buy his CDs. No police officers, by the way, were charged in his death. He said those things at a funeral, at a service for five police officers who were killed, five. And he's talking about the inspiration, what inspired the killer talking about what a nice guy he was. Barack Obama, this was a very strange episode that's often overlooked. But what he revealed there was his plan, I believe, to tear this country apart. And when anyone, no matter how good their intentions may be, paints all police as biased or bigoted, we undermine those officers we depend on for our safety. When anyone, no matter how good their intentions may be, paint the police as all biased and all bigoted, that undermines police. How can you have good intentions when you say these things about police? It gets worse. And as for those who use rhetoric suggesting harm to police, even if they don't act on it themselves, well, they not only make the jobs of police officers even more dangerous, but they do a disservice to the very cause of justice that they claim to promote. The language is so bizarre, and words matter. People who call for harm to police do a disservice. It's bad marketing somehow. This is sinister stuff, and he's planting the seeds. But America, we know that bias remains. We know it. 
whether you are black or white or Hispanic or Asian or Native American or of Middle Eastern descent, we have all seen this bigotry in our own lives at some point. We've heard it at times in our own homes. If we're honest, perhaps we've heard prejudice in our own heads and felt it in our own hearts. We know that. Speak for yourself, Barack. I think you have a beef with cops. That's what I think. And also, I'm sorry to say it, with white people. It's clear as anything to me now. One more. None of us is entirely innocent. No institution is entirely immune. And that includes our police departments. We know this. <laughs> we know this. We know this. He's talking about police departments and their racial bias when five police officers were just killed, huh? Five police officers. Well, he helped create the situation we're living in right now. Oh, boy, did he. You know, during his administration, I started to see it, this this disrespect of police that I hadn't really seen before. I'd never seen anything like this, throwing basketballs and dousing police with water. Do you remember this? It happened. It really happened. And the police were told, do not respond. And then it escalated. Black Lives Matter summer, I mean, really, not since the 1960s. And yes, officers dying in the line of duty. Shot and killed, these are just two, two that I'm most familiar with here in New York City early this year, but it's happening everywhere. We've seen something like a 50% increase in law enforcement deaths, shoplifting, people just helping themselves to property and not buying it. Where did this mentality come from? Barack Obama and the left set the conditions for all of this, and now these crimes have been essentially normalized. Maybe normalized for the media, but not for voters. Shocking the conscience. Did you see this? A woman being pummeled by a guy who already killed his grandmother back in the 1990s. This happened uh, near the JFK airport here in New York. Also, uh, this, another horrific moment, a man being pummeled on a Chicago train. Happens to be Asian, could this be a hate crime? I don't know, possibly. And this poor kid looked like he was trying to make friends at a, at a recreation center and then bam, gets punched and then kicked repeatedly. Um, I'm glad this young man is alive. This is, uh, this is America, this is what we're dealing with.